Welcome to Agents Growth Academy. I am your headmaster, Jim Schubert. I hope you're ready to grow big or go home. We've got a fantastic guest for you today who really has some good experience in growing big, Mr. Laban Ditchburn. He's going to talk to us about defining your world's best title, and you'll find out what that is in just a minute. But uh, Laban, welcome to the show, man. Jim, so great to be with you today. And I've got to say, I was thinking about this. You are the only headmaster that I'll ever have any time for. <laughs> my, <laughs> my experience with school and, and, and growing big is there was a period of my life where I really grew big and that's when I turned into a big fatty, but we can talk <laughs> about how I got rid of most of that uh, later in the show, but it's really yeah. lovely to be here and lovely to see you again. Well, I'm, I, I'm honored to have you former fatty. Um, can I call you that? No, I'm kidding. You can, yeah, well, <laughs> it's the truth, right? The truth will set you free, even if you were a former fatty. I love it. You were introduced to me by one of our other fantastic guests, Mr. Tommy Breedlove. Uh, tell me, tell me again, and tell the audience because they've gotten to know him. The audience has through the podcast. Uh, tell us how you know Tommy. I, I well, I was just listening to the interview you did with Tommy Breedlove, and Tommy Breedlove and I. He was introduced to me by a random couple that run a podcast in Australia when I was in Australia last year. And a good friend of mine, Emily, connected us. And then Tommy came on. Tommy came on the podcast and we just hit it off. And uh, the friendship has just blossomed. He's just one of those guys that you connect with. And him and I uh, are on a mission. And I'm blessed to know him and have him in my life, as I'm, as I'm sure you are as well. You know, So big shout out to Tommy. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Saw him at a uh, charity event a couple of days ago and that dude is really good at giving bear hugs. Yeah. yeah. He's a, he's a big imposing dude. Eh? Like, <laughs> and he's got two big dogs. We hung out with him uh, recently actually. And, and uh, he's got an amazing book called legendary, which I would highly recommend anyone listen or read. Uh, it's a powerful book. It really is. Yeah. Changed my life um, in, in so many ways. And, Continuing to, I, I joined his mastermind, so it's just been a, a blessing. Get to, I think I get to spend some time with him tomorrow uh, online. So, very more very blessings good. to you, brother. More blessings to you. I know, I know. <laughs> um, let's get into it. And, and and for those who couldn't tell, couldn't detect the Melbourne accent, you did grow up in Melbourne, Australia, correct? Yeah, not Melbourne, Florida. It's. Uh, <laughs> it, I actually grew up in New Zealand. Oh. in Christchurch in New Zealand. I'm, I'm half and half. So you're right on both accounts, but I've spent equally half my life in both countries in the last 20 years of my 41 years on this planet in, in Australia. Yeah. Awesome. In Melbourne. Wow. Yes. Love it. And it was, it was voted and has been voted frequently the most livable city in the world. And I would debate that that needs to be reassessed in its current state, but that's just my humble <laughs> opinion. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was yeah. there about 20 years ago, but only for a, a day or two. And I didn't really have a chance to spend too much time. So it was, it was yeah, actually it's raining. A, so it's a beautiful place, four seasons in one day. Yeah. Uh, but um, it's really evolved. And that's why I'm, I'm in Mexico now. Like we, uh, we made a decision to, to make haste and get out of an environment that wasn't really serving us well. Yeah. And that's something that ties in with this world's best as well. But we'll get to this Good. in a minute. Yeah. Well, well okay. So. When, when I had you fill out the, the intake form for the show, like I have all my guests do to tell us a little bit about yourself, you said if this interview were a masterclass, you would name it, how to define your world's best title. So there must have been some pivotal moment or some epiphany that you had that made you say, I need to define my world's best title and perhaps others do too. What, what was going on there? So right after you listen to this podcast episode, I want you to Google or in YouTube rather, Steve Hardison, Steve Hardison, the ultimate coach. And there's a video that's about 12 or 13 years old. It's two hours and 10 minutes long. And I want you to watch it. Now, Steve Hardison is known as the ultimate coach. He's based out of Mesa in Arizona. He's a devout Mormon guy and he coaches some of the most extraordinary people on the planet. Uh, people like Yana Van Zandt, who was Oprah Winfrey's coach. Mm. And, and up until last year, he was an enigma. Jim, he, he refused to go on podcast. He has turned down going on the Oprah Winfrey show countless times. Like 
he just didn't want to be involved in that whole scene. Yeah. But there was this video that existed of him talking about an American footballer called Deuce Latui, who was the first Tongan footballer to ever make it to the NFL. Yeah. Now, you don't need to be a sports fan or, a, or an NFL fan to appreciate the story, but this was t two hours and 10 minutes of DNA-alteringly good impact on my life. <laughs> And, and I got off this, I got off watching this video, Jim, and I was so moved by it. I was like, my God, I need to be in the presence of that man to see if what I experienced on the, on the, uh, on the video was what he's like in real life. And I got his phone number and I called him and he picks up the phone and he said, hi, this is Steve speaking. I said, Steve Hardison? He said, yes, it is. I go, Steve, it's Laban Ditchburn from Melbourne, Australia. He goes, oh, Laban, I've been waiting for this call all my life. Never even heard of me before. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, Steve, I just watched this video with you and Deuce Latui. And I was so moved by it that I just needed to speak to you to see if what I experienced was what you were like in real life. And I, and I just wanted to ask you one very specific question. He goes, what's that, Laban? I said, what do you need help with? He said, wow, Laban. He said, I really thank you for asking me that question. He said, you know what? I'm 67 years old. I'm 8% I'm body fat. I do 10 miles a day. You know, I got a loving wife. I got everything a man could ever want, but I really thank you for asking me that question. And I said, oh, no worries, Steve. Uh, I said, are you, are you still not going on podcasts and doing interviews and that kind of thing? And he said, uh, that's right, Laban. I said, oh, no worries. I said, because I'm, uh, I'm a speaker, I'm a coach, and I've got this amazing podcast series called Become Your Own Superhero, and I'm well on my way to becoming known as the world's most positively influential speaker. But someone that I respect and admire recently said that there's too much ego associated with that statement. Mm. He goes, Laban. I go, yeah. He goes, you tell that person to F off. <laughs> Using the full word, right? Yeah. He goes, you know who I am? And I go, who are you, Steve? He goes, I'm the best coach in the world. <laughs> now, he's $200,000 for 50 hours of his time, this guy, right? But he delivered that statement without any ego. None yeah. at all. Now, for a long time, the two years that I'd sort of been migrating into this, this world of becoming who I am now, right? I was really lacking the clarity of who, what it was that I did. And you, quite often you ask people in this space or in any career, like, what do you do? I'm a, I'm a speaker. I'm a coach. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm an author. I'm a podcast. I'm, you know, I've got all the, I'm a husband. Yeah. And I got off that call with Steve and I was a changed man. And I called another good friend of mine, Chris Doris, who features in this two hour, 10 minute long video. Hmm. And he's also an executive coach and, and we brainstormed over four hours and came up with the world's best courage coach. Now my, my now wife had to go to Russia for some urgent family stuff. And this is in September of 2021. We're in the middle of lockdown in Australia with the longest lockdowns of anywhere in the world. Yeah. My ability to earn an income had virtually gone out the window and we needed money. And so we brainstormed with this Chris Doris guy and, and I'd always been known as being very courageous and making outreach to very, very famous people and people like Les Brown and, you know, Diplo and Princess Beatrice. And I've spoken to Brene Brown just by cold calling them, right? <laughs> and he said, here's, here's what we're going to do. And we came up with this plan. And so I started cold calling these businesses in the States. And I spoke to the guy, Eric Yang at Zoom, and he was in his car phone. He couldn't really hear me. And that didn't work and then tried to call someone at Cisco and at Walmart and, and like it was getting late in the US and I started calling companies in Australia. And this one guy picks up from Hodges Real Estate, which is the oldest real estate company in Australia. Hmm. He picks up the phone, he says, hi, Tony speaking. I said, Tony Zarka? He said, yes, it is. I said, Tony, it's Laban Ditchburn from Melbourne, Australia. He goes, oh, hi, Laban. Do we know each other? Because I had such confidence in, in the way that I delivered that, that yeah. line, right? Yeah. I said, Tony, we've never spoken before, <laughs> but today's your lucky day. He goes, he laughs. laughs. He goes, 
why is it my lucky day, Lab? And I said, because Tony, I'm the world's best courage coach. And I teach your people how to take bold, massive, and strategically courageous action to facilitate miraculous outcomes. He invited me the following Wednesday to get on another Zoom to present for some training and coaching that that organization needed. Hmm. And I get on what was a half an hour call that went for an hour and 45 minutes. Wow. And I asked him, I asked, it was a, it was a Zoom call. He was at home, yeah. I was at home. I asked him one very specific question about what he wanted to do with the business. Very open question. And just let him talk for as long as it took, 45, 50 minutes. And the power is in the listener. Yeah. For all the for all the people that are that are struggling with sales here, the power is with you, the listener, right? Mm. And I paused and I just said to him, Tony, how about creating the best real estate company in the state of Victoria, where Melbourne is? Mm -hmm. And his eyes widened and he looked up and left and you could see him thinking about it. He was nodding. I said, well, what about becoming the best real estate company in Australia? Now his eyes are really wide and now he's nodding. <laughs> and I said, Tony, you do realize in order for that to happen, you need to be the best real estate CEO in Australia. Mm -hmm. And two minutes later, I had this guy out of his chair yelling at the top of his lungs. I'm the best real estate CEO in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and I pitched a quarter of a million dollars worth of training and coaching to this organization on that call. No slide deck, no warm introduction, no referral, no nothing. A cold wow. call a week earlier with a declaration to the universe, not to my ego, to the universe, <laughs> to me. And he looked at me and he, he didn't dismiss me or guffaw or, or hang up on me. He said, Laban, he said, I physically do not have the liquid to invest in that right now, but let me see what I can do. And, and what happened, Jim, in that moment was really transformative in my own my own glass ceiling of what I thought was possible and where, the level that I could play. Yeah. And it was a really wonderful lesson in what is possible. And so whatever happens with Hodges real estate, whether they call me up and they, and they, and they eventually say, Laban, we're ready. Like the byproduct has been this magnificent momentum that it's created in my own life. And so the reason I wanted to share this with you is that the moment that you realize how powerful you are, as a human, as an individual, and realize to step into your greatness, to your divine, to your spirituality, whatever it is that's your God, like your reason for being on the planet, you can achieve literally anything. And now when people tell me I can't do it, I spend all my time trying to figure out how I can do it. <laughs> I love it. And I'm curious, how does that relate to what you alluded to at the beginning being overweight and making a change in your life? Because you look like a pretty fit guy, man. Like I, I dare say a stud. <laughs> My wife is well, right upstairs. So she'll listen to this later. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate that a lot, Jim. I, I, um, I, I'm actually heavier, a little bit heavier now than I was at my, my lightest. And I lost at, at my peak, I lost 60 pounds of body fat, but I put on 30 pounds of muscle wow. and, and a half a kilo, uh, which is like, you know, a pound and a bit of, of bone density. Yeah. I had an autoimmune disease that I put into full remission and, and I did I'm that sorry. using a, Can you say that one more time? Because that I, was powerful. I had, I had past tense, a, an, an incurable autoimmune disease, according to the medical experts, which was good gastrointestinal reflux disorder, which is chronic heartburn or silent reflux, you know, whatever, it's a digestive disorder, uh, by using a carnivore diet for three years. Wow. And, and in the process of putting a species appropriate diet into my system, my body has transformed I'm 42 in June, June, yeah. 2022. And, uh, and I've completed three, completed three 60 miler ultra marathons, 
I've been medically withdrawn from one, which is one I attempted five weeks after I did my first one when I had an IT band issue. And, uh, and I've completed about, I don't know, 10, 10 marathon distances, maybe long, maybe more. It kind of doesn't matter once you've gone longer, Who's right? Who's counting at this point? Right? <laughs> but, but, and I'm not saying this to, to gloat or to brag or whatever, yeah. but like, <clears throat> you know, and, and the highlight really was in June last year, I ran a 30 miler nonstop on zero sugar, zero carbs. I had a ribeye steak for breakfast. I drank half a gallon of homemade bone broth over the course of the run, took in uh, about 10,000 milligrams of sodium, which is like 10 teaspoons in water and nine slices of Yarlsberg cheese. And you, and you might be listening to this going, well, I don't know a lot about running, but that doesn't seem like it's possible. Yeah. And this goes back to my statement about what I now believe is possible, right? What, what, what's the story that you are telling yourself? I had Tommy Breedlove mentioned this in, in his interview with you. Mm. It's just, a, it's an illusion. It's yeah. something we create. Like what's stopping you from making, making it a seven figure business? Yeah. Or even a six figure business. What's stopping you from creating the life? You, what's stopping you from working 20 hours a week and creating the life of your dreams? Hmm. That's a good question. And I wrote that down. I think a lot of people listening to this show are likely feeling because I've spoken with enough of them that they just have too, they're too busy. That's a terrible word. By the way, we're trying to eradicate that from our, from our vocabulary at work. We're trying to say productive. You're either productive or you're not, but all these things that distract us, you know, and, Whatever it is, I think people have told themselves plenty over and over that, well, I'm limited. I only have so much capacity. Um, so how do they get out of that? So when was the last time you someone told you what to do? Well, let me think. Not your My wife. wife. <laughs> <laughs> Some, someone outside of your family. <clears throat> Like a, some, some strange, someone came out and said, oh, you need to stop smoking or you need to put that beer down. You need to. Yeah. And, and how did you respond? Probably not very well, right? Yeah. Hand right. up, who, stop. Who are you? Don't want to hear it. Yeah. Even, even if it's going to save your life, even yeah. if the information that they've got to share with you is going to save your life, put that loaded gun down out of your mouth and stop playing Russian roulette. Yeah. Oh, who are you to tell me, right? Yeah. So uh, slightly dramatic examples, I'm, I know, but. It's all, it starts with us. It starts with leading by example, right? And, you know, you mentioned something really interesting about the, the self-talk. What, what I've done in my life, I don't know exactly when I did it. I think maybe in the last 12, 18 months, I've made a conscious effort to remove all negative self-talk out of my life. All of it. And what happens is when you remove it of, out of your own vernacular, you start noticing how other people speak about themselves. And I've told my, my circle of friends, which has changed heaps in the last few years, by the way, hmm. in the right context, by the way, if you're going to be negative Nelly, I don't want to hang around you. Just so you know, I can't, I yeah. physically cannot be around that because I'd rather be around people that are going to lift me up and that I'm going to be able to lift up. And, and if you are surrounded by people like the sky is falling and, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not a delusionist. I'm not, I don't even know if that's a word, but it sounds great. Yeah, we'll use it. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I, it's not that I don't do bad things, but it's just how I respond with the language. You know, some people in sport, like, ah, oh, you're such an idiot, you know, talking to themselves. Yeah. What yeah. good is that doing you? I'm, t I'm talking things that, that you've all heard a hundred thousand, a thousand times before. And maybe it's just coming from me this time around that might resonate in a way that you'll do something with it. Yeah. You become like the five people you spend the most time around. You'll learn within a few thousand bucks, right? There's something yeah. personal moving social circles so you can be around people who are going to lift you up. You know, we are entering a very, very, very interesting time in history, man. I don't know what's going to happen. I've got an inkling. I hope it doesn't. But if it does, I'm thinking, how can I best prepare for this, right? I want to be around people that, that believe that everything is possible. 
Yeah. The, the yeah. sheer fact that Anna and I got out of Australia during a, a global lockdown. Yeah. Right. We had to get special permits to leave the country. Special permits. Can you imagine that as citizens of Australia to leave your own country? And they rejected my application twice and Anna's once. And that if I could share something personal with you, please, sir. Anna's, Anna's reason for she had to go to Russia to testify against her stepfather who from 15 to 21 had been systematically abusing her, resulting in two pregnancies, which were two illegal forced abortions, which is the catalyst for damage that's been 16 consecutive miscarriages. The Australian wow. government had this information and they still rejected her first application to leave the country. Wow. Right? Wow. You could forgive me for being angry at that. Sure. Right? But rather than getting upset about it, I was like, okay, well, how are we going to solve this problem, right? And then my publisher, I had a book come out late last year. The publisher wrote, a, uh, whose husband was a lawyer, wrote a letter uh, demanding that I be available to get to Frankfurt to go to the Frankfurt International Book Fair, which is the largest book fair in the world. It wasn't quite so big last year because of all the, the coronavirus stuff, but it was still an yeah. opportunity for me to get it. It was easier for me to get to Germany than it was for me to move to Queensland. Jeez. Wow. So don't tell me what is not possible anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because my life depends on it with some of this stuff. And yeah. I don't want to sound overly dramatic, but like <clears throat> what are you what are you accepting as gospel? What are you receiving from out there in the world, wherever it might be, as as truth? And and I because I've been lied to all my life from everyone. I'm, I've got to figure it out for myself now. And that, that process of figuring out that journey has been really valuable and it's a valuable skill that then I teach people now. Yeah. I love it. Thank you for sharing that. You know, I was thinking about Tommy a second ago when, when you were talking about all that and, and how, you know, he, he talks all the time um, about, I, I love this concept of you have, you know, if you're, if you're, if you've ever gone rafting, right. And, and, uh, in a river and you're sitting in the boat and you know where I'm going with this, but for people who haven't heard this, like if you fall over overboard and you're in rapids, they throw you, you know, first thing is you have a life jacket on and you have to quickly get on your back and then look for the rope that's being thrown to you from the raft. And then as soon as you grab onto the rope, all you have to do is just hold on to it. They will pull you back into safety. But he says, you have to participate in your own rescue. And as soon as I heard that, because I've been river rafting plenty of times, and I was like, oh my God, that's so true. It's so true. Like, is if you don't, if you don't flip over on your back and you start trying to swim and do everything they tell you not to, um, you're doing all the wrong things. If you're not willing to grab onto the rope that's being thrown to you, uh, or in your case, create the rope, <laughs> right? <laughs> Manifest the rope. Um, that, that's a huge deal. Well, and I think, you know, what you've created, Jim, is you should be so proud. You know, like, I don't know how many podcast episodes. I think there's like 35, 40 maybe you've done. This is episode 41. 41, right? That was a yeah. good guess. Maybe it wasn't a guess. <laughs> and uh, this, this act of putting yourself in this position of vulnerability in the industry you're in is really brave, man. Like, Thank people... You. Like, and, and uh, people that might be outraged saying, how can you share that information about your wife? She's got her own podcast now called World's Best Trauma Recovery Podcast. And it's awesome, right? She's, wow. She talks about this stuff all the time. She's reclaimed all her power. Like, she's, she's thriving. Don't worry. She's doing great. Good for and, her. Uh, you know, I might be the world's best courage coach, but she's the most courageous person I know. So just, just a side note. But, um, you sound like the world's luckiest man. <laughs> Mate, I, I honestly am. I am <laughs> I'm seriously punching. It is ridiculous. She's so hot. She's three quarter <laughs> Russian and one quarter Japanese. If you just imagine, imagine, right? So hey, I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed. But you know what? You know what? I, I manifested her into my life and and me into hers. Like we wrote yeah. down a list of what we were looking for long before we met each other. It's a magnificent love story. You can read all about yeah. it and uh, and bet on you the book. I love right it. Right towards the end. I love Won't it. Won't spoil the ending. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's pretty good, right? 
So, so I'm curious, going back to some of the things, some of the concepts you were talking about at the beginning with having the courage, because I think about, oh my gosh, who, who right now would I not have the courage to just pick up the phone and call? First of all, my, I was thinking when you said that, like, how did you get his number? <laughs> Um, I'll tell you, this this is a great hack for all the yeah, for all yeah, your, your insurance yeah. guys and girls out there. <laughs> so there's a product called Lucia.co, L-U-S-H dot C-O. It's a plug-in for Chrome. And it will legitimately reveal email and phone numbers of people that have, I think it uses a combination of artificial intelligence and maybe data that people have registered over the years. It's um it's a it's legitimate. As far as I know, there's, there's no issues with legalities. It's like yeah. the way that they sell marketing data, I think. But, you know, it's a subscription-based thing. And I have called and spoken to unbelievable human beings as a result because a lot of people manage their own affairs, right? And mm. no one has the balls to cold call Les Brown. Yeah. And then he came on the podcast when I had 10 subscribers back in May, 2020. And wow. I didn't tell him how many subscribers I had. If he had asked, I would have told him. Yeah. And then he came on the podcast and, and, uh, and I said, Les, what do you think of the name of the podcast? Become your own superhero. He goes, and just the way he responded, if anyone's heard of Les Brown, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, again, once you've searched for the Steve Hardison stuff, search for Les Brown on YouTube yeah life-changing stuff and then he i was so moved by the way he responded to the name of the podcast that i just verbally diarrheaed my story of transformation to him <laughs> you know and over the last six years i've conquered drinking drugs and gambling and philandering living and you know the autoimmune disease and all the stuff yeah and something that i shared with him really resonated with him jim and he just said congratulations Lave. and i said thanks les he goes do you have a book and i went no now, bear in mind, I never finished high school. I never went to college. Mm. Hence the headmaster comment, right? <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> and he said, Layman, if you're going to be a speaker, you need a book for credibility. And then he goes, who's the most influential person in your life when you were five? And I thought about it for a minute, Jim, and I was like, oh, man, despite her many flaws that have been my darling mother. Mm. He goes, what attributes did you get from your mother? And I thought about it for a minute. I was like, man, she was spiritual and unconditionally loving and tenacious and like caring. Like he's writing this stuff down. He, he looks up at me, Jim, and he says, Laban, now bear in mind, we hadn't even started the podcast. Yeah. This is just chat between me and the world's greatest motivational speaker, right? <laughs> he says, Laban, this is a God moment. He said, I'm going to show you how to monetize your passion. He read back to me then the blueprint for this book he wants me to write called Bet On You. He said, Laban, you're going to write the book. You're going to turn the book into a keynote. You're going to turn the keynote into a three-day retreat. And even if you muck this up, you're going to make 200000 in the next 12 months. And then he <laughs> said, Jim, he goes, and I'm going to write the forward to your book. Wow. And interview you on my show with 4 million social media followers. Let me show you something. Wow. <laughs> Apart from my tropical shorts. Bet on you. <laughs> forward I by... Les Brown. Oh now, I know my gosh. People listening wow. they can't see what I'm showing, but you'll yeah. see the book, right? That's and that, that is, again, I'm not saying this to <laughs> rub this in anyone's face or to gloat yeah. or to Skype. Like what gives me the right to have the audacity to ring out and connect with people that inspire me and lift me up? Mm. What gives me the, how dare I do that, Right. Les Brown has now become a friend, right? Wow. He's he's joined our mastermind. We had dinner with him, you know, a month or so ago at his house. Yeah. And that might not mean anything, but it's it's like they said never meet your heroes. Well, I disagree with that. I think you should hang out with your heroes, right? <laughs> because it's just so remarkable and and uh just the blessings and I'm sharing a stage with him in Panama City Beach in Florida in September and and yeah. uh upgrade your life to her. And uh, th this is just the, the blessings that can come from taking bold, massive and strategically courageous action to facilitate miraculous mother flipping outcomes. I love it. I love it. 
I, I'm curious, what is going through your head when you're on the phone and it's ringing for someone like Les Brown, who you've never spoken to before, but it's a big mother flipping call that you're about to have. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> they get, I'm doing them less and less these days because I don't have to do them as much as I used to. Right. Cause I'm now I'm, I'm being referred warm introduced, which is definitely a lot easier. Right. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, there's a mix of, of nerves and excitement and, and fear and anticipation. And, but I'm, I'm becoming so acclimatized to that feeling of fear and anxiety mm. and understanding the power of it, that it mm. no longer holds dominion over me. So someone mm. said to me yesterday, like, speak, speak your trauma until it no longer holds power over you or something like say it yeah. so many times that it loses all impact. And that's what I've done sharing my stuff. I bared my soul in that book. You know, people, there's so much shame with, with, uh, b being an alcoholic and a drug addict and, a, you know, cheating on, and I put all that in the book cause it's yeah. a lot of it's really entertaining now that it's all, you know, past bygones be bygones and I've apologized and moved on. Right. It's a powerful sure. anecdote cause it alleviates the pain of other people thinking that they're really terrible human beings when really they just the same as everyone else, you know? Yeah. They're just human beings. <laughs> just human beings. Right. Yeah. And so, so now when I, when I am making a phone call, there's now that I've pulled it off plenty of times, there's not as much fear or, or heightened anxiety, you might say. And then my only other question about that, I appreciate that. Thank you. Is what, how do you know what to say to start out? How do you go about <laughs> planning that? Because I think a lot of agents that are listening to this are going, okay, I, listen, I, I make phone, I make cold calls and every time I'm trying to figure out what's the best thing to say, how do I approach it? What's your, do you have a secret sauce strategy? <laughs> I'll give you, I'll share a story with you. That'll help explain where, where yeah. I'm at with my own brain. Right. I so love stories. First thing is, I go into every single interaction in my life, not just cold calls, but in everything that I do thinking, what value can I add this person's life? First and foremost, right? The go-giver mentality, Bob Berg, mm -hmm. John David, Mann. read that book. If you're in sales, read that book. Mm -hmm. If you're a human, say it again, when I was the book, the, that, that go-giver G O G I V E R by Bob Berg and John David, Mann, ranked in the top 10 of the best motivational books on selling, I think ever. It's a two hour lesson on Audible um, for time poor people. I was in Arizona in Cave Creek in April this year. And I was at Fry's, the huge big supermarket chain. Yeah. You got Fry's? You got Fry's in Georgia? Well, I, I know a Fry's Electronics. Is that not the same? No. Okay. It's a big, big supermarket chain. I think about 160,000 employees. Got it. I was wandering around the store and I heard a, a recorded voiceover from a lady, Monica Garnes, who's the president. And it was a lovely message saying, welcome to the store. And it was a nice touch. And I was buying some groceries and I tried to tip the grocery bagger who was a young down syndrome man, yeah. a couple of bucks. And the yeah. guy at the counter said, sorry, Sue, we can't, we can't receive tips. And I was thinking, why not? And so I said, why not? He goes, I don't know. It's just <laughs> policy, right? So I said, well, that's a load of malarkey. Let me see what I can do, lads. I got home, got out the lucia.co and I called Monica Garnes. <laughs> and I said to her, and I'll paraphrase because I can't remember exactly what I said. It was along the lines of Monica, it's Laban Ditchburn from New Zealand via Cave Creek, Arizona calling. I always liked it, <laughs> geographical location. I don't know something about it. Yeah. I was calling to see if you would like to co-create a miracle with me. And she said to me, no word of a lie. She said, well, I love miracles. What did you have in mind? And <laughs> we had about a 10 to 15 minute phone call. I need to look at my call logs. And I said to her, and I shared the story about trying to give the, the tip to the young guy. Yeah. 
and and I, I said, why you know why can't they receive tips? She said, Laban, it's a policy we've had in place for thirty plus years. It's just not something we've ever looked at. Yeah. Now, what I what I didn't tell you is before I got into my career of being the world's best courage coach, is I worked in technology recruitment for thirteen years. Selling humans is challenging work, right? But you learn a thing or two about psychology. Yeah. And I said to her, "How's your recruitment shortage going right now, Monica?" <laughs> she said, "Oh my goodness, Laban, it's in the toilet like every other retail environment." I said, yeah. "Huh." Because I said, Monica, because one thing I learned about my 13 years in recruitment is that people appreciate being valued far more than they do getting paid. Mm. Yep. From that conversation, she invited me to connect with her head of HR and uh, gave me an email address and, and I reached out to the head of HR and incidentally never heard back, right? Yeah. Now, now. I'm not tied to any outcome with the stuff. It's really important. I'm not like, because I don't get the outcome that I think every time I do this. Yeah. I get the outcome that I need. And what would make my whole day is if the next time I'm in Arizona, I happen to go back into Fry's and all of a sudden the staff are super engaged and up and about and they can receive tips. Mm. So that, that's one one of many examples. If you think about what value can I add this person's life? Every every single person that's at that level is being cold called. How many LinkedIn messages do you get with people jumping straight into a cold approach or people you connect with on Facebook? They go, hey, I've got this amazing thing that's going to solve your problem. And they've never even taken the time to figure out what the hell you do. Yep. Get them everywhere. Right. Yeah. The, the power is in the listener, like I said before, right? Mm. There's, for, with what you guys are doing, the, the greatest outcome would be you having your door knocked down with people saying, hey, sign me up. I hear you're the best insurance insurance agent in the area. You did such a great job with so-and-so. Like, it's yeah. kind of what we all hope for, right? Sure. And so you got, like, I'm doing this course with a guy called Myron Golden at the moment. Um, for those who don't know, Myron Golden is a 61-year-old African-American guy based out of uh, Florida. Mm -hmm. And he's an expert at monetization of a message doing i'm not even i think he made 50 million last year he's on track to make 200 million this year works with people like russell brunson and wow. that, that caliber right i really yeah. encourage you to check him out heart centered yeah. guy he's a man of faith uses no profanity and i learned that the hard way when i was talking to him on the phone <laughs> but we're doing this we're doing this five-day challenge right and he's like you've got to you've got to put your put yourself in a situation where people can find and connect with you so he puts out all this content on, on his YouTube thing, kind of like what you're doing with this podcast, right? Right. And allowing people to organically find you. That's something to think about. Yeah. That's great. I love it. The Go-Giver. I am going to go get that one along with your book. I love it. Are you ready for the rapid fire round, sir? This is this is terrifying. You think ah, cold calling cold calling CEOs is this is terrifying. <laughs> it's not that bad. Shoot. It's not that bad. <laughs> All right. One piece of technology or software you can't live without. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> it Bingo. really is magnificent. Yeah. It really is. What well, tell tell us the uh, just Google Lucia. L-U-S-H dot C-O. Got it. I'm going to look that up right afterwards. Uh, one book that you uh, would recommend to everybody that you just read or you're reading or something recently that just struck a chord. There's a book that I read uh, called 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the world class by Steve Siebold, S-I-E-B-O-L-D. I've read more than 500 books in the last five years. Whoa, most <laughs> Legitimately, that's another that's another secret hack. You gotta read more, right? And I'm, wow. I'm not joking, but that book was one of the first books that I read. It's a really consumable, easy book, and it's really inspiring. 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class by Steve Siebold, who's a, um, Hall of Fame speaker based out of, uh, he lives in Beaufort 
in Georgia, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I don't know where oh, how close that is from you, but um, I yeah, remember um, that. Yeah. Not not too far, actually. Yeah. I'll have to I'll have to use Lucia or uh, Laban to find. <laughs> He, is, he was available on Lucia, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Here's one uh, that I think you'll appreciate and have to think about for a second. Maybe not. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? <sighs> yeah, you're right. That is something worth thinking about. It really probably is this innocuous, all right? You are exactly where you're supposed to be. Ooh, tell me about that. You're Why? exactly. So I, I don't know the huge background context of this, but I hear this a lot. You know, people are struggling in their, in their existence, their journey. It's like you are exactly where you're supposed to be right now. And no matter what you're going through, it's like if you think about all the most successful people on the planet that are truly fulfilled and happy, right? Yeah, that, that there's lots of wealthy people, but lots of miserable wealthy people as well. The people that are truly fulfilled, like they've all gone through more than likely some major adversity. And if you were to ask them as they were going through that adversity, do you want to keep going through this to continue on the path you're on? They'd say, no way, get me out of here, right? <laughs> get me off. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I've had plenty of times in my life, Jim, where I'm like, what is the point of living? Like not suicidal, but like, what is the, what's the point of all this? Why am I suffering? Yeah, sure. Why am I so suffering? But so it's like, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. And that's a hard thing in the moment to, to realize. Um, especially when you're going through some tough things. Um, and I've shared with, you know, plenty of folks that, you know, we've, we've, watched our two older kids uh struggle in this last year and, and now it's been a it's been a tough thing um but to say that you're you're where you're supposed to be sometimes you do have those moments where you you kind of like rise above it somehow and 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 almost like an out of body of experience where you're sort of looking around and going you know what actually this is this is pretty good and sometimes you don't see that until afterwards too yeah i agree that's great i agree Great advice for your younger self. I love it. Um, so I normally ask my guests uh, if they would prefer soup or hot chocolate as a gift. But seeing as <laughs> you're in a location in Mexico where neither of those would be uh, helpful to you, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a, a page out of your book and, and, and as far as giving. I'm going to make a donation to uh, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation, and I'll tell you why. <clears throat> it's a cause, and I'm going to do it on your behalf. It's a cause that we truly believe in. I'm not sure if you're familiar with cystic fibrosis. Yep, I am. Yeah, I am. <clears throat> do you, horrible, do you know horrible that's condition. Um, not, I don't have any family members or super close friends, but I know plenty yeah. of friends or spouses of people that have suffered from it as well. Debilitating... Yeah usually shortening the, of the life as well. Not, not great. Correct. Yeah. Currently no cure, but we have done amazing work in the last 10 years. Uh, I'm on the board for something called ensure the cure and, and the short story. And a lot of people have heard this already who listen to this show, but Clay Snelling's a fellow insurance agency owner here in Atlanta. His daughter has it. And he asked uh, a handful of people, uh, including myself about 10 years ago, you know, to, to help. Um, he basically said, I need your help the clock is ticking that that was the message. And once I realized what this disease was, I was all in and I thought about my own kids. We just had our third child and I thought, Oh my God, I can't even imagine if my kids were um, living with this. And, and, but the good news is Laban in the last 10 years, since I've been working with this foundation, uh, the life expectancy with someone living with CF in the U S has gone from 30 years old to 50. 50, 20 years added, uh, on average in the last 10 years. So I am more than honored to make a, a donation on your behalf. Um, I think it's probably the best thing that I can do considering, uh, you probably don't want hot chocolate or soup right now. <laughs> How's that sound? <laughs> do you know you, what? Man? Do you know what? Well, first things first, uh, hot, 
items go down really well in these super warm climates. Like really? I'm only wearing a jacket and a, and a shirt because I'm a special guest in this amazing podcast. Otherwise <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing no shirt, which is why I'm so tan looking. Right. But, <laughs> but I got to say that nothing would make me happier than to, to, uh, accept that, uh, donation on behalf and, uh, to, to do more great work with them. Like uh, this is something that's super, not just CF, but like seeing what happens when people can heal from disease or illness that that encompasses all of their time in their day. Like you yeah. cannot get into creation mode if you are unwell in that manner, right? Yeah. And and I was unwell for most of my adult life, whether I realized it or not, right? Mm. And what I've been able to achieve in, the, in that time, that six years has been really remarkable. So anyone else that can heal from that, fantastic. I'm all for it. Yeah, love it. I thought you would appreciate that, especially since you, I, I still am like just baffled that you're able to uh, kick a, an, an, auto, an incurable, incurable in air quotes, uh, autoimmune disease with your diet. That's pretty pretty dang amazing man yeah well here's the secret that no one tell no one talks about right yeah. most of this stuff is either fixable or greatly reduced with dietary intervention without and i know there's lots of nuances and lots of ideas but i'm telling you all right this isn't just happening to me this is happening to tens of thousands of people using the same thing. And I, and I believe things like CF as well, uh, people have had improvements. There's a, there's a, a website, meetrx.com. And I think it's actually been rebranded. I, I don't, I can't remember the new name, but it's got why it's, why it's interesting for people is it's got a list of anecdotal healing stories with all the different afflictions, mm. thousands of them. Just yeah. their own stories and might be beneficial, might not, but like start start believing what is possible. Don't don't ever allow a doctor to tell you anything for sure, because they don't know dick. Excuse yeah. the French. No, and, and I'm curious, where can people go uh to learn more from you specifically about this? Look, the majority of the information is through the podcast. So it's called Become Your Own Superhero. If you, if you go through the website, then you can choose whether it's it's got all the Spotify links or Apple or YouTube, yep. whatever. I've interviewed 150 people since May 2020, and a lot yep. of them are experts in the scientists. I've got a Nobel Prize winner on there. I've had lots of people that are experts or PhDs that are really heart-centered individuals that have the only agenda they have is, is helping people. And that's, you know, a lot of them have, have moved away from their careers and given up their, their licenses to be able to promote this. Cause the moment you go outside of the guidelines, you lose your mm -hmm. license. So a lot wow. of them have, have given up that whole career just to, to talk about this. Wow. That's pretty powerful. People who want to speak, be able to speak the truth and then lose their license for it. That's uh, that's big time. It mate, it's it's mind boggling. And yeah. if people just say, look, Laban, what's one thing you could share with us today that, that would like immediately improve our health? Here's this this is do with this what you will. But yeah. it's not about dietary uh validation or what's best and what's like like this is the result of thousands of hours of research, interviewing smartest people on the planet, right? And living it is to remove all seed oils out of your diet immediately. I'm talking soybean, rice bran, safflower, canola, anything that's been chemically extracted from the seeds of vegetables, right? It's not even a vegetable. It's just, it's just, it's, it's disastrous for our health. It's usually a GMO product. So it's all the GMO stuff is doused in Roundup or glyphosate, which has been, it's actually banned in most, most parts of Europe. It's only the US and Australia and a few other countries that allow it. And so you, you're taking on the toxic effect of that, which reduces mitochondrial function, which are all your energy cells, right? Which produce all the energy and it stores itself in your body fat because it's a toxin, right? Mm. Get rid of it. 
stick to animal fats, tallow, yeah. lard, ghee, butter, try and get the best quality you can afford and you'll, you'll feel a thousand times better. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and similarly, I was going to ask one final piece of advice for our audience based on anything we talked about today. We didn't talk about this, but this is really important to me. <laughs> yeah. Really important. Yeah. What people think of me is none of my business. I love it. What people think of me, and I'm talking about you saying this out loud, what people think of me is none of my business. People don't think about you anywhere near what you imagine. <laughs> they do not care. They're worried about their own stuff. Think about how much time you spent worrying about someone else. You don't. You worry about your own stuff, right? Yeah. What people yeah. think of me is none of my business. Just repeat that out 10 times loud to yourself when you're having a bad day. You'll be good. Um, Laban, this is a God moment. No, no joke. My youngest daughter, 10 years old, uh, struggling with friend issues at school. Um, she's actually going to be moving schools next year um, for not just friend reasons, but this morning was tough. This morning was tough. I'll get personal and deep with folks here for a second. And, uh, you know, she, she came home from school yesterday, air quotes, sick. She's only got two weeks left of school. She does not want to be around these kids. And that was, you know, this morning it was a struggle just to get her to get out of bed and finally get dressed. Lots of tears, lots of wailing and gnashing of teeth. And I don't know that she could totally comprehend what you just said, but wow, that would be if there's any level of comprehension for a 10 and a half year old to understand what you just said, that is like literally hitting the nail on the head of what we were struggling with this morning. What, what people think of me is none of my business. If I could teach that to her, she would be far better off than she was this morning or any other day that she struggled. And I bet there's other people out there who even as adults, right? Even as people in our forties, right? that still struggle with this. And I know I've seen it. I've literally seen people. And you know what? To be quite candid, I'm sure I've been uh, guilty of, of that myself, just worrying about what other people think. And, you know, it's just, yeah, you, you think of whether you're doing a podcast or writing a book and you have imposter syndrome or what, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jim, I, man, I really appreciate you sharing that because it, it's this is so this is really helpful for me, right? I, I I'm so gracious for the for the feedback because it like it 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 is so powerful. Like, and I can give you a great example. All the people of of the people that I have reached out to in cold call, right? Maybe one percent have responded negatively. You know, maybe mm. half a dozen have said, "How did you get this phone number?" Right? Yeah. Out of out of hundreds. Yeah. I can guarantee you right now they are not thinking about me. Yeah. I can guarantee you. <laughs> and and the thing about your daughter, yeah. You know, and the universe is just, you know, if it's all too hard, maybe it's the wrong, maybe it's the wrong direction. Yeah. With this, with this uh this further what people think of me is none of my business. You could also add that when people are bullying or being mean, they are telegraphing their own bull crap onto yeah. you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. They, they, it's they are. They yeah. they're trying to tall poppy syndrome, trying to cut you down to their size. Yeah. So keep reaffirming it. She'll do great. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yes. And wise, wise advice to leave us all with. What people think of me is none of my business. That's so powerful. Love it. Love it. Uh, Laban, if people want more Laban in their life, where tell them where they go. <laughs> Well, I'm already married, so uh, <laughs> the only other option now is the website. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well uh, yeah, I just I, I pull every, all the resources in the website. It's got access to everything there. There's um, there's lots of exciting stuff on the horizon. I've always got my finger in lots of pies, and uh, I really love the life that I'm creating for myself. And and it's don't get me wrong as well, Jim. It's like life is not without its challenges. You know, I said to you about all these miscarriages, like 16 consecutive miscarriages, two wow. ectopics, one that nearly killed her in 2019. So I, like, I'm desperate to be a father, right? Yeah. So, I mean, so is Anna to be a mother. 
And yeah. so where the next big challenge is like getting to the root cause of this. And thankfully, because she was able to go to Russia to testify against this guy, mm -hmm. she, she met a gynecologist who figured out what was going wrong and we yeah. are hopefully getting to the root cause of it. So, yeah. you know, this is just another, you know, what's the lesson? It's going to be another book. You know, what a great yeah. comeback story that'll be, you know? Yeah, I love it. Levin, stick around for me for one second, but uh, for our audience, man, it's been fantastic having you on the show today, and, and uh, thank you so much, man. Oh, no, my pleasure, and uh, if you, if you, what's, what do I, I forget what I normally say when I start off my videos, um, <laughs> if you're having a great day, if you're not having a great day, I'd encourage you to have one, and if you are, we'll keep up the good work, would you? <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> well said, buddy. All right, stick around for me, but uh, everybody, grow big or go home.